Welcome to this video. In this video, I want to share my personal, highly subjective list of top web development trends for the year 2018. So let's dive right into it. And before we do so, if you want to read about all of that, you can find a link in the video description, or if you're viewing this video on academind.com already, you can just read below the video. So let's dive right into it. So let's have a look at these trends. I identified eight major trends, not ordered by importance. I want to highlight this. This is not ordered by importance. Let's start with the first trend. And this is a boring trend. The basics, really? You need to know the basics? Yeah. Why is this a trend? Because it's more important than ever before. The basics are something you need to know, otherwise you can't be a web developer. Everything builds up on that. You don't need to be an expert in everything, but you need to know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and the roles these technologies play. Especially JavaScript powers everything and you will see a couple of other trends where we see JavaScript again. So you need to know that. Learning JavaScript alone probably is a hot trend. It already was in 2017 and that is still the case in 2018. And I only code in JavaScript on the other hand doesn't count. You also need to understand the rest and how it interacts with CSS and HTML. Okay, so back to the trends. That was a boring one, but important. What's the next trend? Node.js. Now, it's not new and it's been trending for the last couple of years, but also in conjunction with some of the later trends we'll see, it's really important. It's really picking up acceleration and more and more web apps are transferring over to Node.js or using Node.js code in one way or the other. Additionally, we use Node.js in a lot of front end build workflows. If we use Gulp or Webpack, all of that runs through Node.js in the end. So it's super important. It's the front end number one language, JavaScript and Node.js also is important there. And being able to use it on the back, it makes a lot of sense. You learn JavaScript once and you use it twice on the front end and back end. It's easy to get started, either because you already know JavaScript or because it's not that hard to learn simply. And it's also used in a lot of other trends we'll have a look at later, maybe like serverless and AI, but let me come back to that. So that was Node.js. We're going to stay in the JavaScript world. It is really important, I'm sorry. Front-end frameworks. We already worked with Vue and Angular and React for this year and the last couple of years, but they're all going to stay important. Now, it might be the case that one framework becomes more important than the others. Oh, and React is a library, sorry. But in the end, right now, all three have bright futures, have their niches, their purposes, and their companies using it. And learning one of them or having a look at all of them actually is a good idea. It allows you to learn a lot about web development and to create engaging and reliable and interactive web interfaces. You see that managing UI state manually is horrible and that these frameworks help you with that. And in 2018, we see more and more improvements on the performance side, new awesome features being added, there will be some nice updates for Vue and Angular if you read the Twitter messages of the teams behind it. So this should be an exciting year for front-end frameworks again. They're going to stay important and probably become more important. Because one thing is important to understand, we've engaged with them a lot. So you watching this channel probably did and I did. But web development still mostly happens outside of single page applications. So there's a lot of growth potential since single page applications is of course one of the major fields where these frameworks shine. So what else have I got for you? Now this is something new which I haven't covered too much on this channel yet. Web components and compilers for web components like Stancil. I have a short Stancil series on this channel though on my Ketamine channel. What are web components about? The idea is that with web components, we can build reusable custom components and now they're supported with some polyfills for some browsers in all major browsers. So we can save 
overhead JavaScript that we might have when using a framework or a library and just write engaging UIs with just vanilla JavaScript by building reusable custom HTML elements. You already built components in Angular, React and Vue, but you can only use these components within the scope of that framework. You can't use a React component in a Vue app. Well, with web components, which you build with vanilla JavaScript, you can use them anywhere. So they work together with popular frameworks. And that's all important. Web components don't necessarily mean that frameworks like Vue and React become redundant because these frameworks still offer things outside of the component thing. They offer routing, state management, stuff like that. But they might change the way we use such frameworks and maybe the focus of such frameworks in the long term. So this is a hot trend, still evolving, still there's not too much material on that. There are still some things that need to be fixed. Writing web components on your own isn't that much fun, for example but using compilers like Stancil makes it much easier. There's Angular Elements, an initiative which was announced by the Angular team, which also means that you can build web components with Angular, reusable standalone web components, I should say. So we will see a lot of development about this, a lot of things happening in this area in 2018. Now, the next trend are static web pages. This, of course, is connected to JavaScript being so important and single page applications. Static web pages generated with Jekyll, Hugo, or Nux.js, for example, to generate a static view application have the advantage that you deploy and ship pre-rendered HTML files. You have no server-side setup because your pages are not rendered on the server. They are pre-rendered during development. This gives you great search engine optimization capabilities because on your server is the finished HTML page. It has very little latency, therefore, it doesn't need to be built on the server. It's also not a single page application where the index HTML file is almost empty and needs to be populated by JavaScript, which is hard for search engines if that JavaScript first has to reach out to some server and asynchronously load some content. Search engine crawlers won't wait for this. So this is all to fix because we have a pre-rendered version, which we can still update behind the scenes thereafter, but we have an initial version. And therefore, this works great, especially with single page applications, because it fixes some of their issues, mostly that, well, the initial page was empty to search engine crawlers, and it can be a big improvement for your app. So looking into projects like Nux.js, therefore is a great idea because this allows you to turn your view app into a statically rendered application. And I might also create some videos about that in the future. So diving into static page generators like Jekyll, like Nuxt, which is more than just a static page generator, I should add, and like Hugo is a good idea. Progressive web apps is another top trend for this year, in my opinion. Progressive web apps have gained a lot of momentum in the last year already, especially since July Google I.O. I released a course about progressive web apps on Udemy and progressive web apps have one big and awesome promise to you. They use web technologies to build mobile app like experiences. They allow you to implement offline support, push notifications, background synchronization into a normal web page, which is not installed through an app store. And this has one major advantage, the reach. Because apps distributed via an app store are of course hard to find for users because how often do you randomly search for new apps you don't know already? Not that often, right? The average user, the average mobile user installs zero, yes, you heard this correct, zero new apps per month. So deploying a mobile app can be good in some use cases, but for an app that no one knows, that isn't searched for, it's hard. The web, on the other hand, is searchable. We got Google, we got other search engines. So your web page can be found if the content is good. And therefore, we can combine the best of both worlds. We can build a website but still implement native mobile app-like features, make it work offline, 
after the user has visited at least once and so on. And browser support for progressive web app features like service workers, which play an important role, is becoming better. Recently, Safari announced coming support. It's already in the beta version. So this is awesome. Progressive web apps allow us to build highly engaging web apps that feel like mobile apps. And this trend is going to stay important in 2018 and probably become more important. Now, what else have I got for you? Serverless. Serverless works nicely together with single page applications and the other trends. Serverless doesn't mean that you have no servers. It means that your server side code can be shipped to services like AWS Lambda, where you have no setup pain, where you don't have to worry about scalability because you're not managing a server on your own. That is done for you instead. You just deploy your code, let's say it's written in Node.js, and it runs when needed. You also only pay for what you need. Behind the scenes, the service provider basically spins up uh, an, an environment for your code whenever it needs to run. And it does so in a very efficient manner so that you don't lose lo a lot of time for that. This is a huge thing. It allows you to focus on your code and not become a part-time system admin. It solves security issues, cost issues, and planning issues and gives you a lot of time you can spend on your code. So that is great. And why is it a big trend for 2018? Because more and more services offering things around that idea are coming up. We have AWS Lambda for quite some time, but now DevOps are becoming better. So managing and rapidly deploying serverless code is becoming easier. The ecosystem is evolving, like serverless framework, a framework which makes building serverless apps for various uh, serverless service providers easier, is becoming more mature or is pretty mature already. So these are all things we should keep in mind and looking for serverless app development is definitely a hot trend for 2018. It's a flexible backend where we focus on our code. What else could we want? Now, what's the last trend? It's the buzzword we hear everything. Artificial intelligence and bots. Well, it is a buzzword, but it is, of course, really a hot trend. Artificial intelligence is becoming more accessible and easier to incorporate for everyone. You don't have to be a studied data scientist or anything like that to start using artificial intelligence in your apps. Just as with serverless, more and more services are coming up by AWS, by Google, that make it easy for you to incorporate some features driven by artificial intelligence into your apps, like image recognition, uh, machine learning, which is becoming easier with some services, chatbots, which you can build in a very easy way now. We got all of that and these things can improve most business models. Maybe not all of that, but there are things that will fit into your business model too. I'm pretty sure about that. Why not add a little bot to your page that helps users navigate around or solve the simple problems that might come to you? Why not add image recognition to sort out images user uploaded to your service if they contain content you don't want to have on your page? These are all things driven by artificial intelligence and with artificial intelligence models becoming better and better, these services become better and better and we get more and more services. So we'll probably face a bright year regarding artificial intelligence and us being able to incorporate it in 2018. So these are the eight major trends. And now you might say, oh, something's missing here. Your favorite trend is missing here. Well, this is just my list, but I hope it gave you some nice ideas. I got some other points though. So what else should you learn? What should you focus on besides these trends? And by the way, you don't need to dive into every single of these trends. Pick the ones that are interesting to you, of course. It's, uh, there, is, there are enough trends for everyone. So what else is important? Well, testing. Testing is not a trend, but it's becoming more important, I feel. Unit tests, end-to-end -end tests. I might cover this on this channel in greater depth in the future too. 
it is something worth looking into, not necessarily a hot trend, but definitely something that I recommend learning as a next step in your career maybe. Tooling, super important. We're using Webpack all the time. We also use Babel and so on. It's going to stay important. Thankfully, we have a lot of CLIs and so on that give us working setups for web development projects out of the box because learning all of that man, on our own is pretty cumbersome. But still having a look at how they work might be worth it so that you understand what that CLI created project setup you're using is doing. And optimization, always going to stay important. Dive into best practices there to write better code, to handle images better, optimize images. A lot of resources about image optimization can be found online. This is something I also can recommend looking at. Now, what about other things like PHP, Ember, Laravel, Angular 1, Bootstrap, Ruby, and so on? Are these all dead because JavaScript is so important? No, they're not dead. JavaScript is important, no question about that. And PHP might have had brighter days in the past. Still, the majority of the web is driven by PHP. Never forget that. If you plan on working as a freelance web developer, for example, it might still be worth learning PHP for that reason. And additionally, it's not like Node.js is the best thing on the world. PHP has advantages, Ruby has advantages, Angular 1 might be better suited for your project than Angular 2 is, though the use cases for Angular 1 might get less and less in the future, to be honest. But definitely keep on learning these things if you enjoy them, because enjoying stuff always is super important. If you think something is cool and you want to learn it because it's cool, but you don't enjoy it, you're not going to get good at it. So please, just because something wasn't listed on my trend list doesn't mean it's absolutely dead and you shouldn't learn it. It's not dead, it's just maybe not the hottest trend right now. I hope this video was helpful and you enjoyed it. Definitely leave any feedback in the comments and I'd be more than happy to welcome you in future videos again. Bye.